uh, if you have an enemy and you find out that once you get into power uh, you use all your powers to be able to fight that person and make sure that the person's business collapse uh, that is the country uh, we found ourselves and um some people might be wanting to know why Mazena the Kano secession bid, uh, why even in the DSS detention he has refused uh, to back down on his statement of, of freedom that he wants the people of Igbos, the Biafrans, to be free uh, from the government of the NIG. Many people would be wanting to know, okay, what is actually happening? Now, can you by yourself uh, analyze, give me analysis of today's NIG, where it looks as if everything has failed? The government, the economy, the system, every single thing looks as it, is, it has failed. The education system, the political system, the the you know the the civil system whereby corruption has become the order of the day and um a lot of people are asking questions when is these things when are these things going to be over and um since 1999 or since the inception of uh the independent of the country called nig there has not been a proper hope because uh, immediately after the independence people hoped that uh, they were going to see better things than when the white man was here and what they saw was opposite of what they anticipated opposite of what they expected to happen and when that happened uh, people lost hope that was the first time people lost hope in the nation called NIG and as time goes on, the military coup and the rest of them and the rest of them, people thinking that somehow, somehow, the nation could be fixed. And when you look at look deep down into uh, the 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 the, uh, the, the uh, motive of of why people do the things they do in Nigeria, you will find that it is just for personal benefit and personal aggrandizement. Let's go down to the letter that. Uh, Mazenan the Kano uh, wrote to the U.S. official concerning his uh, unlawful uh, extradition from Kenya to Nigeria. For officially and publicly acknowledging the unlawfulness of his extradition from Kenya to Nigeria in 2021, the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, IPOB, Nam the Kano, at the weekend expressed in writing his profound appreciation to the government of the United States of America, including its mission in Nigeria. Kano's legal team leader, Aloy Ejimako, who confirmed this to The Guardian yesterday, said that the team acted on Kano's behalf by making public his statement of appreciation title. Thank you, American America officially and publicly acknowledging the unlawfulness of Nambi Kano's rendition, stating that the U.S. acknowledgement was a demonstration of diplomatic courage. Ejimako, who said that his team's attention was drawn to an official pub publication by the U.S. government a few days ago, which was captioned 2023 Country Report on Human Rights Practices, Nigeria. He further said that the U.S. government publication acknowledged that Nigeria's secret police had violated Kano's rights during his arrest and extradition, and that Kano was a victim of arbitrary arrest in June 2021. The legal team said it needs to de-emphasize that this laudable position, which the U.S. was waited for almost three years to take and make public, is surely well considered and thus important for two reasons. First, it affirms the case in chief. We have adduced since June 2021 that Kano was unlawfully renditioned, not lawfully extradicted. And these are two opposite concepts that bear the similar legal implication. The second reason was that it is expected that 
coming from a respected and influential foreign power like the US. This public acknowledgement will likely encourage the government of Nigeria to also acknowledge that it had gravely violated Kano's inalienable human right by subjecting him to a horrendous extradition. To be sure, one way the government of Nigeria can can come clean and acknowledge this religious wrong done to Kani is to banish any further temptations to impunity and summon its powers and directions under the constitution to bring his prosecution to a close without further ado. Ejimako and his team noted that this is the most sensible thing to do, considering that Kano's prosecution has, by effusion of time, become attritional and questionable to boot, given that it was initiated almost a decade ago in 2015 and for alleged offenses that are no longer in play. He added that there are other cogent reasons, including the open and notorious fact that it is becoming increasingly clear that the IPOB leader may never get a fair trial by dint of the grave complications created by his detention at the Department of State Service facility. My people now don't see as they happen, uh, that's one way they hear. And I'm not aware say you can sign on one of the uh, That the US government, uh, US government have condemned uh, Maze uh, Nambekano's unlawful extradition uh, from Kenya. Uh, they have come openly to say that um, that uh, what the NIG government did to him was a breach of his fundamental human right. And of course, every citizen uh, has his fundamental human right. And also, part of this human right we are talking about or the United Nations uh, uh, Constitution on Human Rights were also signed by Nigeria. So, they themselves are party to this particular constitution and that is to say that they are supposed to play along. But meanwhile, there, has, there, there are a lot of charges that have been leveled against uh, Mazin Nandikano, of which if they follow it through the through process, uh, but of course you know that these people are government, they are in power, uh, they have, uh, even when you have written to, uh, uh, what is it called, the US government, and the US government made their comment, uh, Nigeria is still an issue if I should use the word autonomous, but the right word to use is supreme state, uh, who also makes their own decision. But I think um, if it is a country where the rule of law is in action, uh, there wouldn't be a lot of complaints because some of these things you are seeing will be tried by the rule of law. But here you find out that the, 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 those who are in governance play hanky-panky with the rule of law, these laws and constitutions we are made by them, and they are also the ones who are fostering this constitution and law. And of course, you know that sometimes, uh, if you look at what is called the change of constitution or constitution amendment, uh, a, a layman might not be able to understand that what the present government is actually doing is to find a way to water the constitution wherever it can favor them, and that is what we have seen. In the ECOWAS, that is what we have seen in Africa, that is what we are seeing in the West Coast, that is what we are seeing in what is happening in this particular country because those who made the law are the ones who also fought that particular law that, that they have made by themselves. Um, but our own, we say, Ozemezina, uh, Ozemezina, Ozemezina, Ozemezina. And meanwhile, we'll be waiting to see what is going to become the outcome of that particular case. Uh, we'll be see a consign uh, the the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra. I see they be uh, resetting the barometer barometer of development in Southeast. This one is coming from uh, Iwayan, with the president of Ohanes and Dibo. He said that part of his. Uh, his vision is to reset the barometer of development in the southeastern part of Nigeria. And my issue is that how is he going to be able to achieve that? Uh, because uh, the issue of 
or an SND Igbo is not like the issue of government. Meanwhile, before we go to that one, uh, Archbishop condemns Canon's continued detention as group for Sinyako on Supreme Court. Vag this in an Archbishop of a church. And I talk this one. Uh, say what Sinyako they do. Say that one, you know, follow. Now, the Anglican Bishop of the Niger province and Bishop of Oka, Right Reverend Alexander Ibezin, has called on President Bolatinubu to release the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, Nand Kano, for peace to reign. Asserting that the agitators continued incarceration in a national is a national embarrassment. Ibezin, who made this call during the 13th Synod of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion team running the Christian race, implication for the church in perilous times, observed that Eastern Nigeria has suffered a lot. According to him, for Nigeria to be peaceful, the Igbo must be given a chance in the national leadership of the country. He noted that justice delayed is justice denied. He said the truth remains that injustice set back a nation, and once an, an ideology about injustice is imbibed into a people, no amount of force can quell it unless justice is done. The Archbishop said that the church should continually embark on a race guided by the rules, genuineness, goal orientation, endurance, discipline, and preservation to win, and perseverance to win. Wondering if the current generation is not living in the perilous times prophesied by Daniel. In his remark, the Bishop of Oji River, Joseph Ebono, contended that Nigeria appears upside down as the current situation calls for surgery. At the foundational level, to structurally revive the country or opt for something else. Meanwhile, a group under the aegis of American military veterans of Igbo descent has faulted the presiding judge of the Abuja Federal High Court, Justice Bintanyako, who is hearing Kano's case for allegedly not obeying the Supreme Court's judgment, describing Kano as a prisoner of conscience. The group, in a letter to the judge, dated May 1, 2024, stated the judge's refusal to comply with the Supreme Court judgment and the lack of willingness to interpret the Constitution fairly are truly embarrassing and humiliating for the judicial system, Nigeria and the whole world. Amid, amid AMVIE's letter, which was jointly signed by Dr. Sylvester Onya and Dr. Gosson Obiago, President and Secretary of the group, respectively, was made available to journalists at the weekend. It called for Kano's release, noting that the IPOB leader should have been taken to a correctional center and not kept in federal government private owned detention center where his conversation with his lawyer and family members are always monitored. My people now don't see as they happen for that particular matter. We are still on that matter where we say you concern on Hamadika 1. Ofundibo um Odoguana Fanya. You wanna hear I gotta wind down the curtain and if this is your first time of joining us on this wonderful channel, kindly go ahead and subscribe, like, share, comment, and also remember to on your notification button so that whenever our news drop, you will be the first we'll collect them. Thank you for listening. God bless you. Not happening in Anambra State. And now here we are in Enugu State facing the same situation meanwhile let's go down to the full detail of the information so that you can see what is actually happening the combined security operatives led by the nigerian police force have burnt down eager community in uzu one local government area of enugu state killing some villagers the attack in the community it was gathered followed report of the killing of two policemen and three members of Enugu State Neighborhood Watch group by rampaging hoodlums. It had been confirmed that the security operatives killed one villager in what appears to be a reprisal attack on the community. It was gathered that the hoodlums had on Friday evening attacked and killed the security operatives at Ada Rice Production Nigeria Limited, a fan settlement close to the community, following an operation by the suspected Eastern Security Network members to comb the area to ward off invading headers who had attacked the nearby Nimbo community earlier in the week, killing four mourners. Village sources told journalists in Enugu on Monday that a day after the attack on the security operatives, 
the operatives comprising personnel of the Nigerian Army and the Nigerian Police Force invaded the community Saturday night, burning houses and shooting sporadically. A viral video also showed several houses, motorcycles and other properties burning in the raging flames while some shops were looted in the community. A voice heard in the background of the video said, this is a community being burnt down by military and the police from other any division. They are burning houses and shooting sporadically and on people. The community is in danger. Come to our aid. We are not safe. They are shooting at us. The development, it was gathered, prompted a protest by women and children in the community whose video also went viral on Sunday. One of the villagers who spoke to newsmen on the condition of anonymity said that the security operatives raised several houses during the invasion of the community. Last night, army and police invaded Iga community and burnt many houses and in the process, one of us, Richard Okoye, died. He was returning for his life when he fell and died. They came into the community yesterday, Saturday at about 10 p.m. and stayed till 12 to 1 a.m., burning houses and looting people's shops. We all ran away and asked our youth not to retaliate. While disclosing that those who had alternative had fled their homes, the villagers added that those still taking refuge in the forest were not living in fear, not knowing whether the attack would continue. Meanwhile, the Enugu State Police Command has confirmed the attack even as the command was conspicuous silent on the reprisal attack. According to the command, the attack was unprovoked and unwarranted. Gruesome murder of two policemen and three neighborhood watch group members cried out by harbored criminals members of Iga community in Uzu One local government area in the evening hours of Friday, May 3, 2024. The command spokesperson, Daniel Ndukwe, who confirmed the incident in the statement on Monday, said that when the incident happened, a combined security team of three policemen and four neighborhood watch group provided security for a team of visiting investors from Lagos on a tour of a proposed agricultural investment site in the area. However, the team was ambushed and attacked by a large group of criminal elements who opened fire on them. Upon the provoked sudden attack, Members of the teens campered for safety while an assistant superintendent of police, ASP, who led the team, one, neighbor, one neighborhood watch personnel, and three member team of investors were later rescued by police team that immediately mobilized to the crime scene. For the eventuality, murdered members of the team went missing and uncounted for. However, in the course of a full scale investigation and a search of manhole operation launched thereafter, three male suspect, suspects to have masterminded the attack, we are arrested. Their revelation during interrogation led to the discovery and recovery of the slain policemen and neighborhood watch group members in the forest on May 4th, 2024. Their lifeless bodies were taken to the hospital, confirmed dead by doctors and deposited in the mortuary for preservation and autopsy. My people now don't see as it happened. This one is happening live at Ega Enugu State. Um, these people complained that uh, they were attacked by hoodlums uh, and on the reprisal, uh, uh, it was on the, on, the, uh, on the community as it is. Uh, meanwhile, you know, get as it be, uh, we it never be before. Uh, our prayer is um, all them now, all them now. Our prayer is that uh, make another one know they happen again. But meanwhile, um, this issue that have repeated itself again, 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 and again, uh, whereby uh, the uh, force personnel receives attack and they repress this attack on innocent community. Uh, the reason why these security forces were created was because the government knew that uh, one day there will be an attack, one day there may be an armed robbery, one day somebody might be attacked or robbery could occur. And um, when these things happen, I don't think it is expected of the NIG forces to replace this attack, uh, to replace this attack. Uh, on on innocent community 
Why not have an investigation? Why not have an investigation? Let there be an investigation. So, you will be able to find out who is doing who and what is actually happening in that community and who are the people involved in the crime that was carried out. But repressing the attack on the entire community is uncalled for. Is uncalled for. Look at uh, 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 what these soldiers are doing. Yes, they have lost their men. They should be angry. Uh, they should not rest. But their anger should have led them to proper investigation. And also because this community you are burning down, these hoodlums you are talking about are also a threat to that community. So now, why should uh, this community, uh, 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 why should this community be the ones that will be, you know, suffering the brunt of of other people's indiscipline. Meanwhile, you don't even know whether these people are coming from that community, whether they are they are they are outside people. I wanna see again, also Emerson. The by a kinemu no. Um, another information we just the leak for my table now. Be say um, Mazin and the Kano's lawyer say that Mazin and the Kano is not facing treasonable felony. Let's go down to the full detail of that information. They say, contrary to media reports, the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, Mazin and the Kano, currently has no treasonable felony among other charges preferred against him by the federal government. Kano's lead counsel, Barrister Aloy Ejimako, gave the clarification in the release he made available to the Whistler on Friday. Ejimako, however, clarified that the federal government from 2015 to late 2021 preferred two treasonable felony charges against Kano. According to him, However, even as he was renditioned for the treasonable felony offenses, both charges were dropped by the federal government after Kano's rendition from Kenya. Another charge that was dropped was the misdemeanor having to do with the formation of former President Buhari. Thus, from 2015 to 2021, Kano was arrested, detained, charged, prosecuted, nearly killed in Python dance, dance exile. Disappeared and inflammed through rendition for charges that were all later dropped or withdrawn. Ejimako said Kano currently facing currently faces charges wholly related to broadcasts alleged to have been made in furtherance of terrorism, adding that this does not mean the same thing as Kano personally committing any physical terrorist act, as aspect of the media often mistakenly suggest. According to him, this is not semantics as the mere uttering of words or making a broadcast is at law markedly different from committing an overt physical act. Suffice it to say that this is one of the obscuration that will as yet create profound complications as Kano hankers down to defend himself against charges that carry death penalty. He stated further, a declaration of IPOB as a terrorist group by the Buhari administration in 2017 was not driven by any evident act of terrorism, but by a discriminatory tendency which was later declared unconstitutional in a landmark judgment by the High Court of Enugu State in October 2023. Ejimako continued, It was therefore expected that the present government, being more committed to rule of law as it were, would have would have pursuant would have pursuant to this judgment taking administrative measures to formally deprescribe IPOB on its own volition. He also stated that the judge of the Supreme Court in December last year unequivocally exonerated Kano from any notion of having jumped his bail in September 2017, adding that the Supreme Court, which was made aware of the penitent judgment of Abia State High Court of January 2022, quoted copiously from that judgment in making its determination that rather than Kano, it is the federal government that is solely responsible for Kano's inevitable flight to exile. The Supreme Court, Ejimako explained further, determined that Kano's bail should not have been revoked, that it was obtained by deception 
and that he set an ordinary rendition was a criminal act. He said it was therefore a dilemma and oxymoron that who those who committed grave criminal acts against Kano and amongst those detaining and prosecuting him, in his view, Kano's ordeal began in 2015 when Mazin Kano professed commitment to self-determination for his people. He said Kano is possessed of a protected political opinion which Buhari's government timidly considered criminal and thus sought to suppress it by means of punishment of some sort. This is exactly the reason the United Nations Human Rights Council had in July 2022 directed for Namde Kano's unconditional release and discontinuation of his trial. Ijimako added that Kupio's international tribunals had also weighed in against Kano's trial and his continued detention, averaging that as the trial is do dotted to proceed apace. It remains to be seen in Nigeria will ultimately succeed in it, in insulating itself from its treaty obligation. He urged the press to be guided by the foregoing verifiable facts in their future publication regarding Kano's case. My brother, I don't see it happen. Uh, that matter, uh, and I want to say, concern Marzina and the Kano. But now here, I got the one that they caught in. Thank you for listening. God bless you.